Hey, welcome to Canvas Communication Part 3. Now, if you've been following along in this series, you know exactly what we're going to do today. But if you missed Parts 1 and 2, we talked about our diagnostic process. We talked about how we have to take these big CAN networks and break them into more manageable pieces so we can actually diagnose them. We also talked about the topology or the wiring of the networks because they were wired differently. And if things are wired differently, then, well, they got to be tested differently. And then we got into the protocols, the languages of the network. What is actually being spoken on these wires? Because when we get to a spot to test, we have to know what we're looking for. So this brings us to today when we are going to take our process and we're going to apply it to a car that has an issue. But before we get right into our process, there's one quick question that we have to answer. And that is, how do we know a car has a communication issue? How do we know it has an issue in all? But the good part is that's a pretty, pretty easy question to answer. And the easiest place to do it or the easiest way to do it is let's look at the car. Now, the first thing I like to do with any car is just look and notice any little thing that could help me diagnose it or give me a clue to actually fixing this thing. And the first thing I see is the car has registered that the door is open and has also used that to turn the dome light on, which tells me two things. It tells me that the battery is not dead and there has to be at least one module that's working in this car. The next thing I want to do is I want to turn the key on and I want to see what happens. What powers up? We can see our radio powered up. We have some accessories that powered up. We could try some things, make sure to see if the windows open and close. So this is already showing me that there's some things in this car that aren't broken. But when we look at the dash here, you can see that this is where our problem may lie. This thing is lit up like a Christmas tree. We have an eyesight. It looks like a bunch of lights over here, over here. And the next thing I want to do is let's try to start it. And you can see the radio goes out when I turn the key to the on position or the crank position, which shows that it's probably getting a start signal, but I have no start ability on this thing. This thing is not cranking at all. So it's pretty obvious to see that this thing has an issue. So our next step is going to be, since I don't speak computer and you don't speak computer, is we're going to have to get a scan tool on it. Now you're going to see me use this throughout this class. I just want to quick tell you what it is. All this is is a DLC extender. It is a male and female DLC plug with some wire in between it. And the reason I'm, I'm going to use it is for two reasons. One, because it's going to give me an extension so I can actually film this thing without going under the dash. And it's also going to give me a good spot to probe into either in the front or the back without harming the actual DLC. We'll build our car here. And this is a Subaru. Now, the first question it's going to ask me is if I want to auto ID or manual ID. And in most cases, I'm always going to auto ID because it's quicker. And I don't always know what options the car has or what engines in the car. But be aware that if you do auto ID, it may not work correctly because the module that has the auto ID information, like maybe the VIN or some of the attributes, may not be communicating. And since I know what this car is, I'm going to go to manual ID. I know this is a 19 Ascent, and it's got a 2.4 liter engine. Now this brings us to our main screen. And you can see we have all of our, our modules on here. And it also has a code scan option. Now, again, if I'm ever diagnosing a car, I always like to do a code scan. I like to know what's going on in the whole car because any problem could be a clue to trying to find the issue. Another problem that we have, though, is with the code scan, it's just like the auto ID. If some of the modules are offline, the code scan could fail or it could take a really long time because the, the scan tool will keep trying to communicate with modules that aren't there. So I'm going to hit it to see what happens, but I have a feeling we're going to get stuck in a scan tool limbo, as I like to call it. And every scan tool does this differently. Um, some of them go in alphabetical order, some of them go in systems. And we can kind of see already that this thing's really not moving. Now, we could wait here forever, but I'm just going to back out of here. 
and talk to some of the, ma the modules manually. Now, if we think back to our Cadillac, right, we had 100 plus modules. Now, I don't want to go into every single module and see if it has codes or see if there's a problem because that could take a really long time. So what I want to do is I want to start with just talking to some of the modules I know the car has and some of maybe the main modules in the car to try to get a feel for what is communicating and what is not communicating. And then if something is communicating, we're going to write down codes. So I know this car has an engine. I know the car doesn't start. So let's just start with engine and see if this is communicating. And what I've done is I have a list and I'm going to write down on my list what's communicating and what's not communicating because if we go through like 10 modules, by the time we get to the end, I'm not going to remember, remember which ones were and which ones not. So I, I always just like to write them down. And it looks like we're starting off here with no communication with the engine control module. So let's try the transmission. I also know this car has a transmission <laughs> because it moves. Another thing that might happen if you do an auto scan is it might tell you that this car is not equipped with modules that it actually has because those modules aren't communicating. So you also have to be careful there as well. And it looks like our transmission control module is also offline. OK, let's try the analog brakes. And this can take a while. Um, you just have to be patient. This is why we're not going to go over or go through every single module. And it looks like our ABS module is also offline here. Let's move down and pick some, maybe some more body modules. Let's go to EyeSight, because we've seen the EyeSight light was on. Looks like that one is also offline. Okay, what else do we got here? Let's try the body integrated unit. That would be the BCM in this car. Okay, that one's communicating. So let's get some codes out of it. So we actually have some communication. So what this tells us already is the whole network's not down. If we can communicate with something, it means that something has the ability to talk. And remember, if, if something does communicate and sets codes, that doesn't mean that that module has an issue. That module, remember, it could be the tattletail module. Normally, the module that does communicate is the one that doesn't have a problem. But it's showing that I have loss of communication with the ECM, which we know, TCM, the Vehicle Dynamics Control Module, and that would be the ABS module in this car. Parking Brake Module and HVAC. Okay. So we can communicate with something. Let's pick one more here. And let's go to Combination Meter, and this is going to be the Instrument Panel Cluster. Okay, we actually can communicate with that too. So we do have some communication, and that means that there's more than one module that can talk on this network. And this one is showing it also lost communication with the ECM, the ABS module, power steering, restraints. And restraints, okay. So I think that gives us enough basis to try to look at a network diagram now. Now, I mean, we, if you want to, you can go through every one, make a big chart and write it down. But we can always come back to this if we want to see if something else is communicating. For now, I just want to pull up a diagram and maybe get a feel of what the network looks like so we can go to step one, right? So we can break it down. So we have our car built here, and it's a 19 Subaru Ascent. And I like to go to Information Bus because the Information Bus is where all the information is located for the network, not just the wiring diagrams. And you can see it pulls us to a screen that shows diagrams, and it shows OE and non-OE. Now, I get asked this question all the time. What, what wiring diagram should we look at? And my answer is the same all the time. Look at all of them. Look at whatever ones make the most sense to you. Look at the ones that you can read better. Or you know, sometimes you have to look at both of them just to get the job done, because some of them show more than others, or some of them maybe show it in a way that you can see it better. But me personally, I'm going to start with the interactive non-OE diagram because I know this will give me a picture of the entire network. And I want to get a picture of the entire network so I can kind of look around at modules, see how the network's constructed so we can, what, essentially break it down, right? You can see we have one here. And I'm just going to zoom here. And this will give me the whole network. So now what we're looking at here is we're looking at the entire network on three pieces of paper. And it's not so bad. I mean, it's, it's not tiny, but it's definitely not that Cadillac, right? So looking at this now, there's a few things I like and don't like about it already. And one of the things I don't like about it is it only has two wire colors on it. 
It's showing everything in red and blue. Now, my brain is telling me that if everything is in red and blue, this is one big network, right? This is, it's like that house of cards. But I'm gonna throw a curveball at you guys here and tell you that that's not always true. And I know that because I've gotten in trouble thinking that was always true. The car manufacturers get to pick whatever wire colors they want, and a lot of times they'll pick two wire colors for the entire car. But that doesn't mean that this is one big network. Which kind of is confusing, right? Because if there's two wire colors, how do we break it down then? I mean, it's, it's almost impossible. We see there's just wires everywhere. Well, let's think back to our old trusty network diagram. What did they, we use in the diagram to break down networks? Well, if it has a gateway module, right? If it has a gateway module, all we gotta do is find the gateway module because the gateway module is where all the networks go to. So that would be a place we could break it down. And what is one thing that always goes to the gateway module? The DLC. So what I like to do when I get here is the first thing I like to do is find the DLC. Find what's coming out of the DLC and where it's going. Because if there is a gateway module, that's where it's gonna go. And that's gonna give me a place where I can essentially break it down. So let's look at this diagram and see if we can find it. I'm gonna zoom in here. And you can see we have some junction connectors here. And right here is our, our data link connector. That's our DLC. And let's look at the wires. So four and five are always going to be grounds. And this is another reason I like these interactive diagrams because I can click on stuff and highlight stuff and it makes it so easy to follow wiring. Otherwise I gotta print it out. It's like printing it out using a highlighter. It's pretty nice. And we know that 16 is always gonna be a power. Now four or five ground, 16 power are gonna be mandatory in every OBD2 car. And then we have eight here. And let's see where that's going. That is going to a ignition one fuse. Now we know that that is probably a Subaru thing. It's not a mandatory thing, but also we know if it's going to a fuse, it's not a communication wire, so we don't have to really worry about it. And then 15 is kind of catching my eye. Let's see what this is. This is going to the airbag module. And it looks like it's the only pink wire coming out of here, which my guess what this would be, would, it would be a, a diagnostic for the airbag system. Kind of like if you get into a crash, it's a way that they can get information. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm not too worried about it because there's only one wire on here. And look what that leaves us. Let me get these out of here once. It leaves us 14 and 6. And what do we know about 14 and 6? It's mandatory that 14 and 6 and anything over 2008 has to be, that's our high-speed CAN network. So it's a pretty easy DLC. It's only got 6 and 14, high-speed CAN. Let's see where it's going. So zoom out here. and it's going to the BCM, Body Integrated Unit. So, that means it doesn't have a gateway, right? It's going to the BCM, that's not a gateway module. Or is it? We have to throw another curveball at you guys. Now, in the training that we had in one and two, we talked a lot about gateway modules, and every time I showed you one, it was labeled gateway module. But in the real car world, it's not always gonna be labeled gateway module. Um, GM has been doing this for years. A lot of times in a car, there'll be a module that is responsible for being the gateway module. Um, in a lot of cars, the BCM or sometimes different communication modules, sometimes it's the instrument panel cluster, is actually the module responsible for the gateway job, I guess I would say. So just because this is going to a BCM, we can't just assume that it's not a gateway module, especially if the DLC goes straight to it. So now we're kind of confused, right? We is it or is it not? How do we find that out? Well, there's one thing we can do. We can look at the wiring. So let's just kind of look at the wiring here. And we see it has multiple communication lines coming out of it. But we also know that if it has multiple communication lines coming out of it, maybe it just speaks more than one language. That's OK. Maybe it's a, star, a series CAN, but we do have junction connectors. So it's not a series CAN. It's a, it should be a star CAN system. 
So there's only really one way to know if this is a gateway module, not a gateway module. And sometimes the warning can show you on this one, it's not labeled, so we don't know. And that is we have to do some more research. And that's just the way it is, because if we just think that's not a gateway module, we could make a mistake. Now, before we do that research, I actually want to test from the DLC. Now, I know I've told you don't test from the DLC, and normally we shouldn't. We should do the research first, but let's do, the re let's do some testing, see what we get at the DLC, and then we can compare it. And we can see if it was the right or wrong thing to do and why it was the right or wrong thing to do. And I want to start by getting a lab scope reading from it. Let's see what kind of voltage we have at the DLC and see if we have any communication. So let's get this hooked up. Now I have my extender here, and now you can see already why this is beautiful for helping us test this. But we're just going to put one in six. We're going to put one in 14. And we're going to make sure our scope is grounded. Get our scope hooked up here. And one thing I really love about Pico scope is everyone, well, how do I hook this up? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to automotive. I'm going to go to computer communication networks, can high and low. And it's going to, it, it likes to pop up a demo here for you. So I'm going to have to go back here. And then we're going to press play. And look what we got. Two and a half volts. It's hard to see the red one. Let me see if I can pull the, see there's the red one. So that's can, right? And that's good, right? We, we start at two and a half volts, one goes high, one goes low. But what don't we have? We don't have any communication. There's nothing happening on it. So is this good or bad? I don't know. Let's do our other test. Let's do a resistance test from here, because that's, that's, our, that's our big test, right? That's what we always were talked about in, in Canon, what I told you about in some of the other ones. We always do a resistance test from the DLC. We measure at 6 and 14, and we should have 60 ohms on a traditional network. Let's see what we have here. And remember, we have to, remember, we have to disconnect the battery or power the CAN network down first. So we're going to do that, too. So now I have the battery disconnected and I turn my multimeter on here. We're going to go to ohms. Get this set up here so you guys can see it. And we're going to go back to 6 and 14 and see what we got. 120 ohms. Well, that's not a good reading, right? We're supposed to have 60 ohms here. So now we had our two and a half volts on the lines, which was good, but we had no communication. And we have 121 ohms, which is supposed to be bad. But is this reading bad? This is exactly why we're doing this. I told you not to do it, but we're doing it because you can see that we just took some readings and now we're confused. So let's go back to what we should have done first. Let's do some research. So let's get out of here. I'll go back. And now you can see why I went to information bus. So the component tests and general diagnostics. Let's try here. Okay, we'll go to inspection. Wow, look at this. It's another wiring diagram. Maybe this will be helpful.
And I'm looking at his BCM. And you can see right here is the BCM, but I don't see any DLC. Here's the BCM again. So these are those two networks coming out of the BCM, but I don't see, I don't see any DLC. Let's go back. Go to procedure. Whoa. What is this? This is a, a network diagram. And the only thing on it is the DLC and the BCM. And look right here, there's one resistor. Now, we measured ohms from here to here, and we got 120 ohms. Well, maybe that's OK, because there's only one resistor in this network. Let, let's see if we can find out some information. Check for short to ground, check for power, short between the lines, check end resistance. Here we go. Well, look at this. 114 to 126. So we had a good reading. Our reading was good. Let's go back to our diagram. What else does it show us? It shows us the BCM is the gateway module because the DLC is going right to the BCM. And it's on its own network, so it has to be. So what it's showing also is scan tool to car communication is different than module to module communication. It's showing it right in this diagram. And it's showing that the, the, the one resistor was good, so we, we were good. And the two and a half volts, well, the body control module is speaking on CAN, so it should have two and a half volts at idle all the time. But why didn't we have any communication? Well, that's easy, too. If you would design this, if you design this network and you have your body control module, th they know that there's, this goes to a DLC. These are open connectors. These are open pins. Why would it be talking? It would just be shouting down the line by itself. The BCM knows there's nothing else on this line. So the resistance is good. The two and a half volts is good. There's a reason there's, no, there's nothing talking. It's because there's nothing, it knows there's nothing to talk to. So how can we see if there's good communication on here? What is the BCM looking for? It's looking for a scan tool, right? Just like if you're in a room by yourself, you don't really talk. Well, maybe you're talking to yourself in a room by yourself. I mean, I do sometimes. But it's probably not going to talk to itself until something else comes online. And now it knows it has something to talk to. So let's get the scan tool on here and see if we actually have communication. Remember to get our battery reconnected here quick too. Ain't gonna have any communication without that. Go back to our lab scope. And let's just start talking to it. And there we go. Now we can see it. We have communication. So when we just tested this without doing any research, we got 120 ohms. We had 2.5 volts, but we had no communication. It's kind of confusing, right? Then we did our research. We found out the DLC to the BCM is a separate network. The BCM is the gateway module. And we won't have communication unless we talk to it. And I know I've explained this to you guys in the first two classes, but this is me showing it to you guys. And now we can really cement in why we can't just go test from the BLC or the DLC. So now that we know that, what do we got to do? Well, let's get back to the task at hand. Let's get this car. Let's see if we can fix this thing. So we have to break down our network. So now let's go back to here. And let's go back to the first thing we we're looking at, this, these other diagrams we found. And what are these diagrams showing us? Well, the first thing I see here is main CAN. Well, if there's a main CAN, does that mean there's another CAN? And here's A, B. So it looks like this is part of this diagram.
Look at this. Body can. Well, if there's a main can and a body can, there's two separate networks. Let's look at this body can. So here's our BCM. And let's, so, so we, we've, we've, we've now kind of proven that there's three separate networks actually in this car. There is the DLC network for the scan tool. There's a body can and there's a main can. So which one? We need to break it down. Well, let's look at the modules on here. Body control module. Well, we can talk to that one, we know. Combination meter, we had communication with that one. So we kind of know that this an audio unit is working. So we know that this network probably isn't our, all the modules on here are no communication modules. I don't see any of them. So let's go to the other network. And if we look at this network, well, here's A and B. Here's a body unit. And we know, we know we can talk to it, but remember, it's on essentially three different networks. Let's go up to here. Well, here's the ECM, no communication. TCM, no communication. VDCM, no communication. What else do we have on here? HVAC module. So this is the network that we don't have communication with. So now we've essentially just broken it down. Let me see if I can get these all on one wiring diagram for you guys here. So here it is. Here's the network that we have a problem with. We've broken it down. This is the bus or network that we have an issue with. And we can see here's our ECM with a resistor in it. Here's our TCM. Here's our VDCM. Here is our AC HVAC. And now we know that this is a network we have a problem with. So now we've broken it down. What do we got to do? Well, what topology is it? Well, that's easy too. Look, here's our junction connectors. Here's a couple junction connectors. So it's star can bus. So step one, step two, boom, done. What, what, uh, what is it speaking? What's the protocol? Well, it's a can. It's a two-wire can bus, so it's can bus protocol. OK, one, two, three, done. We got to go right to testing it. Look how fast we got one, two, and three done. Where do we test? Well. Let's find some of our junction connectors. That's what we're going to test, right? That's where we can access the network. Now, we also could access the network at some of the modules, but we don't want to do that yet. We don't want to unplug any modules yet. And I did disconnect. I also want to say I did disconnect the battery before to show you guys the why you don't test from a gateway module. But in, we did that to show you why you shouldn't do it. In a normal sense, I wouldn't want to disconnect the battery sometimes because think about your PC at home, right? When your computer is frozen, what do you do? Well, you turn it off and turn it back on, or you take out the battery and you plug it back in, and then it comes back and it normally fixes it, right? That's the big fix. That can also happen on cars on, or modules on a car. So we did do that, which we weren't supposed to do. So when I'm looking at this, I don't want to just start disconnecting modules on here yet. So we need to find a place where we can tap into the network. So let's pick some junction connectors. Now, this one right here looks great. I mean, that looks like one I'd want to get to. It's all the modules are going to it. It looks like it's somewhere in the center of the network. And let's pick a couple more because they're not always easy to get to. Sometimes they can be hard. So we want to have more than one option. So we have, this is a good option. Let's do I-110. Um, let's do R-343. Let's try those three right here. So I'm going to write those down. I-340, I-110, and R-343. And now we have to do is we have to find where are those located. So we're going to go back to vehicle. We're going to go to connectors. And one thing about Subaru connectors that I've learned from working on these, if it's an I, then it's instrument panel wiring. If it's R, it's normally rear wiring. Um, if you look up here, look on here, we can see it says bulkhead. So that would be a B and so on and so forth. So we're looking for I. So let's just start at I here. And we have instrument panel left side. And if we go down here, we can go to, we're looking for 340 junction connector, and it, it's giving me B1. So we'll come back up here. It's like a map, remember? Right, I said this is glorified map reading. B1, and one is here. So here's the connector. So it looks like it's right on the left side of the instrument panel. 
And I also can see 110 here. And that one looks like it's on top of the instrument panel cluster. So we have one here and here, and I'm going to take note of that, and I'll bring this picture with my computer. So we're going to look for those two on the left side of the instrument panel cluster. Let's look up that last one just in case we have to get to that one too. And that is an R343. So R, rear wiring. And there's not a lot here, so let's just look around here. Here it is, right here. R343. And that looks like it's right behind the B pillar. So I'll write that down. OK, so now we have our network broken into one section. We know the wiring. We know the protocol. Now we just got to get to our junction connectors and let's get some readings off of it. Let's find out what, what's wrong with the network. Do we not have communication? Is it shorted to power? Is it shorted to ground? So you can see here we have a lot of plastic in the way. And it looked like our junction connectors were either here or here, somewhere in here. So I'm going to pull this stuff apart and see if I can find them. And I'll hit up with the small camera once I get this plastic off. So the bad news is, and this is going to happen in, in real world diagnosis, as these junction connectors are almost nowhere to be found um, or really hard to access. I'm pretty sure that right here, that right here is the junction connector, but it is taped up really well. And when it comes to diagnosing, I don't like to rip apart any good wiring unless I have to. So these were our two best spots to, to get to junction connectors, but this is just the way it goes sometimes. So let's look and see if we can find our third junction connector. And that was the one that was behind this, this A pillar right here. So I'm gonna pull apart this A pillar and see if I can access the network there. So you can see here, I found the two junction connectors. And you can see we have our red and blue wires, and they just go to these two little connectors right here. Now, the first test I want to do is I just want to make sure the wires aren't shorted to power or shorted to ground. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to hook my multimeter up to the DLC. Now, we know six or four and five are always ground, and 16 is always power. So the first thing we have to do is measure here. So I have it in four. We're going to go to 16, and you can see we have battery voltage there, which means our DLC has good power and ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a resistance reading. I'm going to switch this to resistance, and I'm going to measure each wire at these junction connectors, one, each wire to ground, and then each wire to power to see if any of them are shorted to power and shorted to ground. Once I get that done, then I'm going to test to make sure they're not shorted together, and that would also give me a resistance reading of the network. But before I get that resistance reading done, remember, before we do any resistance reading on network, we want to make sure that we have the network powered down, so we have to disconnect the battery again. Now I can also take a lab scope reading here too, um, but I just want to keep this simple for now because I know I have a hard fault. So I'm going to start with a multimeter. So you can see the multimeter here and I have it in ohms and I have it at a ground. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to zero out my multimeter once here, just to make sure that the multimeter is good and the multimeter leads are good. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure each one of the wires of the junction connector and make sure that they're not shorted to power or shorted to ground. And it's okay if you get some resistance. Because remember, we're, we're measuring through modules and transistors and all sorts of stuff. So a little bit of a, a really high measurement does not mean anything bad here. So that looks pretty good. Let's try the other one here. About the same. So now that I know they're not shorted to ground, and if you want to take a peek here, you can see 
I'm just back probing the junction connectors here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch this from it, the ground wire and I'm going to switch it into a power wire. And I apologize because I'm trying to hold the, the camera here at the same time. So now I have it in pin 16 of the DLC and that's going to be the power. And remember we checked to make sure that we had power and ground there so we know it's connected to the power of the battery or power of not the battery of the car. And we do have the battery disconnected. So now I'm going to probe the connectors again and make sure they're not shorted to power. And again, if you have some high reading, it's okay. And it looks like that's the red one. Let's try the blue. It looks like these things are pretty good. So what this proves to us now is it proves to us that these, the network, at least from where we're testing it, is not shorted to power or shorted to ground, bringing it down. Now the next reading I want to do is I want to do the, the test that we normally do from the DLC, the 6 and 14 resistance test. That's going to do two things. That's going to measure to make sure that the network wires aren't shorted together. Remember, we just tested if they're shorted to power or ground. Now we're going to do them 6 and 14 to see if they're shorted together. And if they're not, we should also get a resistance reading of the network and measure the resistors in the CAN network. These are a little hard to back probe here, so just bear with me. Okay, so look at this reading we have now. That's 116.6 ohms, which is pretty close to what? It's pretty close to 120 ohms. And if you look down here, I know it's going to be kind of hard to see, but I just have one pin in the back of each, of each connector. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm measuring the resistance of the network. And we couldn't do it from the DLC because the gateway module, but now this is the right way to do it. And we have 116 ohms. Now, that was okay from the DLC because there's only one resistor in the network, but this is a CAN network. It should have two resistors. So what is this proving to us? This is proving to us that there looks like there's a resistor out in this network. So what we need to do is we need to look back at our wiring diagram. So if we do a quick recap here, I know that was a little confusing, kind of hard to see. So what we did was we broke it down this network and then we looked for these two junction connectors. And those were the ones that were in the instrument panel side. And we couldn't really locate them, so we decided to just try to find any junction connector we could get to. And the one we ended up finding was this J4 three and J4, three, four, four, sorry. And what we did was we measured from here and we measured from here and we made sure that the, that can high and can low wire wasn't shorted to ground and shorted to power. Then what we did is we did a resistance measurement between them and what that should do is it should measure the resistors or measure through the whole network. And what we got was 120 ohms. And I don't know for a fact if that's a good reading or not. We're going to have to do some research. Now, in a traditional CAN network, 120 ohms means one of the resistors is gone, which means that we would have an open somewhere in the network. So what we have to do is we have to go back and do some research. So we'll go back to our information bus here. So we've got it pulled up here. We'll go back here, and we'll go back to our inspection. What we need to do is we know, you can see here's terminal resistance, but it doesn't give me a spec. And you can see right here's terminal resistance, but there's no spec. So what we got to do is we kind of got to go through this and <laughs> take note of how much information we have here and how they want you to test it. I mean, you could spend all day trying to test it this way. Look at all these tests. So what I'm looking for is I'm just looking for something just like this. Here it is. Now when the bus line is measured, combine resistance of the end resistance, 120 in the ECM and 120 in the body control module. So that's telling us that the body control module and the ECM have 120 ohm resistors. And it says the combined resistance, more than 52 or less than 62, is what it should be. So this is proving to us what? This is proving to us that we either have an open in our network or we have one of our resistors gone. So let's look back at our diagram then. Let's see if I can get my John Madden out of here quick. All 
Okay, so what this shows is we tested from here to here and we got 120 ohms-ish. It was 116, but it was, it was 120. And we've just proven that we have 120 resistor here and 120 resistor here. So what that means is we're only testing through one of the resistors, which means we either have an open in the network somewhere or one of our resistors is gone, but they're in modules. And the modules aren't gone, so what we need to do now is we need to find out which resistor is missing so we know which direction to go to find out where our issue is. So the next thing I want to do, and since the body control mouse is already practically out of this thing, I want to disconnect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect here, and that's going to take this resistor out of the loop. And then I'm going to keep looking at my reading. Now, if it goes to zero, I know that I took this resistor out, which means this one was good. If it doesn't change when I disconnect it, it means we are reading the ECM's resistor, which means all of this should be good. So let's get a reading, see what we got. So here's our BCM here, and you can see it's on this other car, but it's got a lot of connectors, but it's really hard to see. I'll see if I can get to one. It doesn't look like I can, but they're labeled by numbers, and K is the one with the communication line. It's in the back. We still have our stuff hooked up to the junction connectors, and we're still reading 120 ohms-ish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to de de disconnect this from the body control module, or the connector from the body control module, and see what our resistance reading is. Okay, we just went open. So with the body control module disconnected on the communication lines, we have zero resistance. So what that means is we took the resistor out of the loop. So when we're measuring from here, we were measuring this resistor, which means this part of the network is good, which means our problem is farther down the line of this part of the network. So now what we need to do is we just need to divide and work our way back to find out if the ECM or where the ECM is either out of the connector or if the ECM is bad. Now, there's a lot of different ways we can do this. The first thing we could do is we could just keep going down the line this way and eventually trying to find the problem. Now we know we can't really get to this junction connector and this junction connector, so it kind of leaves us a hard spot to test. Now we could go to one of these modules to test, but it's not really measuring on the main line, so I don't want to do that. So what I want to do is and see if I can find one of these junction connectors and test from there because that's closer to our problem and it kind of eliminates all the stuff in the middle if we get a good reading. So I'm gonna write these down and we have B170 and B146. So we'll go back in here. We'll go to connectors. And it was B170 and B146. And that's going to be bulkhead. Let's see location here. I don't see them in here. I also don't see them in here. Here's B416, and here's B170. So let's look under the hood here once and see if we can find these junction connectors, because this is going to be our next spot to test. So looking for b 416, I think I said 146 before, I really can't see it, but just looking down here and looking back at our screen here and seeing B170, it looks like that junction connector is actually right in the open here, and I'll see if I can get a shot of it. Now, this connector right here is B170, 
and see if I can get a better shot. And that's going to be where we can test closer to the PCM. So all we got to do is get that tape off. And what I'll do is I'll also get this out of the way so we can actually film it and see it a little bit better. Okay, so now with that air box out of the way, you can really see this junction connector. And I'll pull this tape off here quick. And now you can really see this junction connector. Here is the top plug, and then you can see all of our communication lines in the back here. And this is the 170 junction connector. And if we look back at our diagram, you can see that this is actually pretty close to the PCM. So what I want to do is I want to do the same test we did before. I want to take a resistance reading here and see if we have 120 ohms with the BCM plugged back in. If I do, I'll unplug the BCM again and see if we still lose the 120 ohms. If we do lose the 120 ohms, that's proving our network is good all the way from this connector all the way back to the BCM, which means our problem would be from here to the engine control module. So I got to get the BCM plugged back in here. And it's kind of hard to get to. Get this out of here too. So now you can see here, I have my multimeter hooked up on ohms and I'm hooked up to the junction connector and I have one in red and one in blue. And I'm still getting my 116 ohms of resistance. So now what I need to do is I need to go and disconnect the BCM. Because if I disconnect the BCM, get the camera set up here, and I lose my resistance, it's gonna tell us that we're good from here all the way back to the other side of the network. So let me go disconnect the BCM and let's see what kind of reading we get. Okay, so now with the BCM disconnected, we have to look at our reading and we can, yep, we can see that we've lost our, our resistor. And this is really good. So let's go back to our, our diagram here. So now essentially what we've done is we started measuring from here and we only measured one resistor. We took it out and we knew it was this resistor. Now we couldn't get to a lot of our other junction connectors. We tried, it was hard. So we moved all the way back and got all the way over here. Then we took a resistance reading from here and we got our 116 or our 120 ohms again. And then what we did is we disconnected the BCM again and we lost our 116 ohms. So what this proves is the communication lines from here all the way across the network are still good. And this proves that our problem has to be from here to here. So obviously our next step is what? We got to get that ECM. We got to get that thing disconnected, test from there. And if it's good from there, then it means we probably have a bad ECM or we have a bad connection at the ECM. If it's not good from there, then we have to check our wiring from our ECM. Let me see if I can get this. Oop. Then we have to check our wiring from our ECM to the junction connectors that we're testing at. So we're getting close. So let's get to the ECM. So after a little research, I found out that this is the PCM of this car and it's actually located in the engine compartment. So we have three connectors here, so we have to go in our service information and find out which one of these three connectors houses our communication lines. So we can measure back towards our resistor in the BCM to see if in fact we have a wiring issue or we have a problem with this module. So we'll go back in service information here. We need to go to vehicle and we got to find that engine module. Computers. Pinout values and diagnostic parameters. So now we have a visual or visual of our PCM connectors. You can see we have our three connectors here. And we have B134, B or E. 1580 and E, or E158 and E159. Sorry, it's a little hard to read. It's kind of small on here. So which one do you need to go to? Well, let's go back to our wiring and see if this will give us any insight here. So we have A45 and A58, I believe that says. Let's see if we can zoom in a little farther here. 
A45 and A58. So 2A, 2B, 2C. So it's going to be this connector right here, and that looks like it's going to be the bottom connector. And you see we have pins 45 and 58 right here. So that's our next spot to test. P connector A, 45, and 58. So let's get this disconnected. These are here's our bottom connector here. So all I need to do is look back at that diagram, find out which one's 55 or 48, and well, I have to go look again because now I forgot the numbers. But I have to find the pins. I'm going to put the right terminals in there, and we're going to do a resistance reading. Now I can't stress enough when you're doing a, a test like this at an actual PCM connector or really any connector that try to make sure that you use the right pins and sizes. If you just start jamming stuff in connectors, um, especially connectors like this, you can cause yourself a world of hurt and a lot of problems in the car. Um, I like to use these ASC Wave ones just because it comes in a full kit. I don't care what you use, just don't, don't jam anything in there, especially your multimeter leads or you're going to have more problems than you started with. I actually grabbed the wrong size, so. Third time's a charm. Okay, so after a little bit of fight, trying to find the right terminals, or terminal adapters, and find the right terminals in the PCM, I got this thing hooked up to the PCM. And you can see that from the PCM, we have 114 ohms. Now it's a little less than 116, but what this proves is if we look back at our diagram now, that everything all the way back to the body control module is good because the ECM is disconnected and we're still measuring that resistance. So I also use the terminal resistor to make sure that there's good pin tension on these pins. So this just proves that we have a bad ECM in here. Now, I don't know if the ECM is bad internally or just the resistor has an issue, but what that kind of gets me worried about is why is that resistor bad? And they do fail sometimes, not very often. And just because the resistor is bad, how do we know that if we put an ECM in here that the rest of the modules that we're in communicating are going to communicate? Because they need that resistor in there to communicate with the rest of the system. Now what if this thing had, was struck by lightning? Or what if something, someone shorted some power to this and actually burned out more than just that resistor? We don't want to have um, an a instance where we just put a PCM in here and then just hope that's going to fix it. So what do we remember we can do to make sure the network is good before we just throw that who knows how expensive module in it? We can use our terminal resistor. We can wire this into the network in place of the ECM, because we know it is a good terminal resistor. And then what we can do is we can hook our scan tool up to it and see if we can communicate with everything else in the network. And we can make sure the network's good before we pull the trigger on that module. It sounds a lot better than just putting the module in there, right, and then finding out that all the other modules were fried too. And to tell you the truth, I have seen this before. Cars do get struck by lightning. People do probe in the wrong spots. People do actually short things out. So let's get this in here and see what we got. So now you can see here that I have my terminals hooked up to the bat or the ECM connector and I've wired in my terminal resistor. So now we're using this resistor to bypass the one in the ECM. So now all I got to do is get my battery hooked back up and let's hope that we got some communication. So we got the key on, resistor in, we'll go back in, we'll exit here. We might have to reset this because the scan tool has been 
kind of turned on and off a few times, so we'll just go like this. And actually, I have to make sure that I have the scan tool plugged back in. Build our car again. It was a Subaru. We'll go to manual ID just again, just in case. Ascent 2.4. Now we get back to our code menu here, and obviously we don't want to try to communicate with the ECM, and I don't want to try my code scan. So let's look at our list here, and let's just try to communicate with some of the stuff that we couldn't communicate with before. Transmission control module. Boom. We have communication. Get some codes out of it. I don't know what that means, but we're communicating with it. We weren't communicating with it before. Let's go to analog brakes. We can communicate with it. It's got codes, but of course it's got codes. It had all sorts of wiring issue. It had a network issue. What other one do we have? Let's try our HVAC. Heating and air conditioning. Now we have communication. So if you look back to what we did, we essentially fixed the resistor by putting another resistor in. And now what we've done is we've proved that the network is okay. The network is okay, so we're okay to put that ECM in. So it just gives us that, not only is it great for diagnosing, but it also gives us that extra good feeling before we put a module in and find out that all the modules have an issue or there's something else with the car. So let's recap kind of what we did. We, we had a car. We, f we looked at the car. We found out what was wrong with it. Then we got codes out of it. We found out what we couldn't communicate with and what we couldn't communicate with. Then we took the wrong turn. My, I told I made us take the wrong turn. And we found out why we can't communicate from the DLC why those gateway modules can be confusing because we had some good readings and some bad readings but once we did the research we knew that they were all good readings once we did that we broke down the network we found out that this network was the network that we had it, we had to test we made sure it wasn't shorted to power we made sure it wasn't shorted to ground we took some lab scope readings we found out that one of our resistors is out of the network which is a wiring problem we knew this because it was two 20, 120 ohm resistors to make 60 ohms and we got a reading, we got 116. So then what we did is we found our junction connectors. We went down the network and we zeroed out what our problem was. And then we even went and put a resistor in there to prove out that the network was good. And what did we do? We followed our process and it worked. And now we know what's wrong with this car and now I can fix it. Guys, thank you so much for, if this is the third one you've watched, thank you so much because this has been so much fun to make. Um, also, if you're here, thanks for making it all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this CAN bus class. And if you did, put some comments in the bottom and maybe I'll get another car in here and I'll do a different network. But as always, thanks for watching. If, hit that subscribe, hit that like button. Ryan with GoTech for the third time, signing out.